in this session we will attempt at generalizing the notion of convolution of two arithmetical functions first let us look at this definition so if f is a complex valued function defined on only positive real numbers such that f of x is 0 when x is in the open interval 0 comma 1 and suppose alpha is an arithmetical function then we define alpha convolution is the generalized convolution f to be the function given by summation n less than or equal to x where these n's vary over only natural numbers alpha of n times f of x by n so this function here is a function from the set of arithmetical functions say a cross the set of complex valued functions which take the value 0 on the open interval 0 comma 1 say f 2 as we will show that this will go back into f that is this side you can already see here that if x is less than 1 we know that there are no natural numbers less than x if x is less than 1 we know there are no natural numbers less than or equal to x which means that this sum will be empty hence if you take an arithmetical function and you take a complex valued function defined on 0 comma infinity where f of x is 0 when x is in 0 comma 1 and you apply this function which we will call as the generalized convolution you will get back a function back in f okay so let us show that this is actually a generalized form of the convolution so what we did in convolution convolution was we take two arithmetical functions and get back the arithmetical function so let us see uh, this exercise this will give us an idea of why this is a generalized notion of the convolution so suppose f is a function from 0 comma infinity to c which takes the value 0 in 0 comma infinity difference n and suppose alpha is an arithmetical function we take f tilde to be the restriction of f to n that is f tilde is the function defined from n to c given by f of x f tilde of x equals f of x that is the restriction of f to n now you can see here that f tilde is an arithmetical function because its domain is n we will show that alpha convolution f the generalized convolution is the same as alpha convolution f tilde when x is in n and when x is not in n we will show that you get zero so what this basically says if i identify the arithmetical functions to be functions which take the value 0 like in this case take the value 0 at every point in 0 comma infinity other than the set of natural numbers then the generalized convolution basically works out to be the convolution only okay so that's you can see then you would get back the arithmetical function if you are identifying arithmetical functions with the functions that take the value 0 at every point other than the points of the natural numbers so let us prove this suppose x is in n 
So suppose x is in n, this is what I want to prove. So what is alpha convolution f at x? This is the same as summation n less than or equal to x alpha of n times f of x by n. Now we know that x is a natural number. So x upon n will be a natural number when n divides x. For every other point when n does not divide x, f will be 0. So this will be summation d divides x alpha of d times f of x by d okay which is exactly summation d divides x alpha of d into f tilde of x by d i can write f tilde of x by d because x by d is a natural number you can see that every other term is going to be zero and this is exactly alpha convolution with f tilde of x. Next let us show that alpha convolution with f at x is zero if x is not a natural number. This is easy to see. So notice that if x is not a natural number that means x is in 0 comma infinity difference n then alpha convolution f at x would be equal to summation n less than or equal to x alpha of n times f of x by n now notice that x by n cannot be a natural number because if x by n was a natural number say k then this would imply that x is a natural number n k therefore x by n is not a natural number which means that f of this value x by n will be 0 so therefore this will give me 0 and this proves our exercise okay Next, let us show that if f is a uh, function from 0, comma infinity to c and f of x is 0, when x is in uh, this should be 0, comma 1, then i convolution with f is 0. Here, just for you to re recollect, i of n is equal to 1 if n is 1 and it is 0 if n is not equal to 1. So let's prove this. So what is i convolution f of x? i convolution f of x is summation n less than or equal to x i of n times f of x by n. Now notice here that i of n will be 0 except when n is 1. So you can see that if x is less than 1, if x is less than 1, then this sum will work out to 0 because the sum will be empty. So it will be 0 if x is less than 1. If x is greater than or equal to 1, then the only time i will be 1 is when n is 1 for no other natural number. Therefore, this will give me i of 1 that is 1 times f of x by 1 which is again f of x. So, this will give me f of x. Now we know that f of x is anywhere 0 when x is 
less than 1. So this will be exactly f of x. Okay, so i convolution with f at x is f of x. We know that i convolution with a arithmetical function alpha is also alpha. So you can see how this is a generalization. Remember that we cannot talk about f convolution i. This is not the way the generalized convolution is defined. Okay. Now let us show that if f is a complex valued function defined on 0 comma infinity with f of x equals 0 when x is in uh, so this here is 0 comma 1 and suppose alpha and beta are arithmetical functions then alpha convolution with beta convolution f is the same as alpha convolution beta convolution with f first let us see whether these make sense notice that as f is a complex valued function and beta is an arithmetical function therefore beta convolution f is again a complex valued function with domain 0 comma infinity and as we have seen it will be 0 1 0 comma 1 so we can again talk about alpha convolution with beta convolution with f similarly here we know that since alpha and beta are arithmetical functions the convolution of alpha and beta is again an arithmetical function so we can talk about alpha convolution beta convolution with f okay so let us start with any x in the domain of these two functions the domain of both these functions is again 0 comma infinity suppose x is in 0 comma infinity what will happen to alpha convolution with beta convolution f this would be equal to summation n less than or equal to x alpha of n times beta convolution with f of x by n now what is this this is summation n less than or equal to x alpha of n times what is beta convolution with f at x by n this will be summation sum m less than or equal to x by n beta of m times f of x by m times n now we multiply this alpha of n throughout in this sum we will get summation n less than or equal to x summation m less than or equal to x by n alpha of n beta of m times f of x by mn now notice that here we are varying this m in such a way that n times m is less than x so let us take m times n to be k so this will give us summation k less than or equal to x and now if m times n is less than k you can see that n is the divisor of k so this will be summation k less than or equal to x summation say d divides k alpha of d beta of now you can see i have taken n times m to be k which means that m will be k by d k by d into f of x by k this is equal to notice here that 
f of x by k is a constant in this sum because x by k is constant here okay it, there is no d in it therefore we can write this as summation k less than or equal to x summation d less than d divides k alpha of d beta of k by d times f of x by k this is summation k less than or equal to x this here you can see is alpha convolution with beta at k times f of x by k okay so this will be alpha convolution with beta convolution with f at x so given any point x in 0 comma infinity we say that the image of this function is the same as the image of this function therefore the two functions are the same let us now prove the generalized Mavius inversion formula so what are we proving we are showing that if f and g are complex valued functions defined on 0 comma infinity such that both f and g vanish on 0 comma 1 and if alpha is an arithmetical function then both these expressions are equivalent what does the first expression tell us the first expression tells us that g is alpha convolution with f while the second expression tells us that f is alpha inverse convolution with g so can i go from the first expression to the second expression then the natural way of thinking of this is multiplying by the inverse of alpha on both sides so since g is alpha convolution with f we take alpha inverse convolution g would be alpha inverse convolution with alpha convolution f this would be alpha inverse convolution with alpha convolution with f but alpha inverse convolution with alpha is i convolution with f will give us f itself similarly we can prove that if f is equal to alpha inverse convolution with g then g will be alpha convolution with f we can do this by left multiplying by alpha so this proves our generalized Mabius inversion formula we can see a fast corollary from the generalized Mabius inversion formula in case both f and g are complex valued functions satisfying the conditions given in the previous theorem and if f alpha is completely multiplicative then we see that g is equal to this sum if and only if f is the sum n less than or equal to x mu of n alpha of n g of x by n this is true because since alpha is completely multiplicative the inverse of alpha is mu times alpha so this will just be alpha inverse of n so this proves a corollary so we will end the session with this corollary.